right, the second part of lecture 14 is now we're looking at the surge function, otherwise known as the drug concentration curve. And you can kind of look at it and see why, that as a drug goes into your body, it goes straight into the bloodstream, it maxes out, and then it slowly starts to come out. So here is our surge function. This is what the function looks like. So you can see AT, that would be your linear, times e to the negative bt, so that would be your exponential decay. So linear to start out, maxes out, where does it max? At 1 over b, and then it slowly decays um, out. All right, and so that's what this is saying here. So the graph below shows the drug concentration curve for one dose of a drug with a minimum effective concentration shown by the dotted line. So this minimum effective concentration basically says when you take the drug, nothing's really going to happen until you get above that line. And then as the drug comes out, um, typically this is where you want to take the second pill again. And that's what this is asking here. Would, when should the second dose be given if the doses are to be as far as, far as possible? <laughs> Bless me. I knew I was going to sneeze. I normally sneeze in two, so get ready. Um, when should the second dose be taken? So it looks like here about 70. All right, next example, the drug concentration for the drug after T hours is given by this function. How can I tell immediately that this is the surge function or the drug concentration? I see a linear piece and then I see the exponential decay. The minimum effective concentration is this 10 nanograms per milliliter. Is the drug effective at T equals two hours? So this is my concentration and the minimum effective is at 10 nanograms per milliliter. Then just simply plug in two and see if it's above my minimum effective level. And yes, it is. If time T is in hours and concentration C is in nanograms per milliliter, the drug concentration curve. So I have another one. How many hours does it take for the drug to reach its peak concentration? Well, if you know you have a surge function, then you simply take 1 over B. Okay, so B is whatever this value is here, meaning it's you don't take the negative with it, which would make sense, not negative hours. And so 1 over 0 0.2, and I can kind of see that that's where it is here on my graph. What is the concentration at that time? Well, I simply plug in if I'm at 5, Hours, I simply plug in 5 for my time, and then that gives me my concentration value. If the minimum effective concentration is 10 nanograms per milliliter, during what time period is the drug effective? This is where you'd look at the graph, and you can see approximately about 1 to, you know, if this is 15, right around 15 hours. Complications can arise when the level of the drug is below 4 nanograms per milliliter. How, must, how long must a patient wait before being safe from complications? So we draw a line at about 4, and so it's saying here when it's above, so complications can arrive when you're above, so as soon as it hits below, looks to be about 20, 20.5 hours. All right, this is a homework question. It says below are the concentration graphs for smoking a cigarette, uh, chewing tobacco, and nicotine gum. So you can kind of see that these all look the same, that you have that first, um, the drug going straight into your body, and then it starts to come out of your body. Uh, these are drop down, so you might be, well, how would I know what to put in this blank? You'll see there's drop down menus on all of these. So for cigarettes, the peak concentration is approximately looking at that value right there. I'm sorry, these aren't drop down. These are drop downs. So the time until peak concentration, so the time, which is here, my peak concentration is about 10 minutes. And then this part eliminated quickly at first, so it starts to be eliminated, and then it slows down. These are your drop down menus. For chewing tobacco, what is the peak concentration? And when does it occur? So my very first peak. Um, at 30 minutes, and then it's eliminated at a slow and er an erratic rate because it in fact starts to go back up and then comes back down. For nicotine gum, what is the peak concentration? 
I can see right here, looks about at uh, 45 minutes at 10 nanograms per milliliter. Oh, sorry. And is eliminated at a slow but steady rate. All right, next example of T is in minutes. Since the drug concentration was administered, this is the concentration in a patient's bloodstream. Again, get used to looking at these. I see the linear piece, and then I see my exponential decay piece. How long does it take the drug to reach its peak concentration? Well, if you remember, how do you find a max? You take the first derivative, and this, this is actually a product rule. So I would find that first derivative, set it equal to zero. So this is good practice because you're going to see, hopefully you're on to me that you're like, why is she doing this? But if you're not on to me, then follow along. So this is good practice of the product rule. The product rule says take the derivative of 20t, which is 20, leave this piece alone, minus leave the 20t alone, take the derivative of this piece, which is the chain rule where you bring the um, exponent down, negative 0 0.05, and you leave this alone. I just multiplied all this stuff out. Um, so this is my derivative. I factor out an e to the negative 0.05t. I set this equal to 0. And all I care is this piece right here. Do you know why? Why do I not set this piece equal to 0? Go for it. This will never equal 0. Think about it. e to the negative x is dk, but the function never actually hits 0. You don't believe me? Try it. And so as I can see that if I plug in 20, that this equals 0. So it would take 20 minutes. Now hopefully you're going, why did she do all that? But good practice, if you remember the shortcut way, you just simply do 1 over b and you get the same answer. So that's what's so nice about these functions. All that I did that last where I set, I found the derivative and set it equal to zero. This just proves that somebody, very nice, did this for you and said all you have to do is do one over this growth rate right here, growth decay. So one over 0 0.05 and you get the same answer. All right, so we have another drug concentration, same one. What is the peak concentration at that time? So we simply plug in everywhere you saw a T, we plug in a 20, and we get our peak concentration. So these two functions, the logistic growth and the search function, you should love because, because there's no calculus involved. Okay, you may have to go through and solve some algebra stuff. No calculus, because they've done the calculus for you to find the max values.